I was lucky enough to be gifted Metal Gear Solid V, The Phantom Pain recently, and it's consumed most of my free time. The gameplay is really satisfying and dynamic, however I was spoiled for most, if not all, of the plot due to the hype overflow on release. Having time to experience the game in earnest, however, I'm beginning to see the underlying issues with Metal Gear Solid V's story from a structural standpoint rather than the quality itself, which in turn shows why so many fans are expressing disappointment in this new entry of the series. To expand on the issues present within the narrative structure of the game, it would help to give a quick recap of what Metal Gear Solid V has been building up to. With Peace Walker leaving off on a tenuous peace among nations but an increased international focus on Big Boss's growing PMC, the game ends with the chilling speech of Big Boss's ideals and fighting to survive the ever-changing times caused by Cypher's machinations. Several years later, Ground Zero is released which sets the groundwork for the Phantom Pain. Chico and Paz get kidnapped and used as bait to lure Big Boss away from MSF, where soon after, the entire operation gets sabotaged and burned to the ground by Cypher, and the chopper holding Miller and Boss gets blown up in the aftermath, which throws Boss into a coma. From there, we would transition into the Phantom Pain, the story of Big Boss's quest for revenge against the powers that lashed out at him and would form the background for what would eventually become the plot to Metal Gear 1 for the MSX. With over 20 years of history, plot twists, character developments, spin-offs, and historical melodrama in general, it makes sense that the plot for Metal Gear Solid V would be a bit muddy. However, it turns out that the game's story is more inconsequential than nonsensical. The main issue is due to the structure of the gameplay more than anything else. Metal Gear Solid V takes a lot of ideas from Peace Walker's playbook of game design, right down to base management, tech design, fragmented missions, optional content, the works. The game feels like it's trying to channel what Kojima wanted Peace Walker to become gameplay-wise, but this was done without any thought to given why said game was structured like that in the first place. Peace Walker was built for the PSP in mind, which means they had to take everything about Metal Gear Solid and break it down into a model that could be suspended and played in fragments while the player travels. There were also the battery limitations of the PSP and the restrictions of the UMD cartridge to consider, which is why Peace Walker threw away codecs for cassette tapes, focused on stop-motion cutscenes, reduced cutscenes overall so they wouldn't get interrupted, and broke up missions into small, easily digested segments. All of these ideals were transferred over to Metal Gear Solid V with no thought given as to why. Modern consoles have the hardware strength to handle extended content, and players sitting at home have time to invest in Kojima's patented 30-minute context dumps, so there's really no reason why the story is supposed to be broken up into tapes and brief cutscenes with no real investment or build-up. This modular structure really kills the narrative. By designing the story with an open world and potentially shuffled content, there's no way to consistently build up tension that the series is famous for, so the payoff feels really stilted and unsatisfying. It would have been far better to reintroduce the verbose style that made Metal Gear Solid famous to keep the plot focused and consistent, but have the mother base content as an optional numbers game and have the side ops as optional content in the main game path. Now with this modular form of deploying for missions in recurring zones and getting story through cassette tapes, you would expect these tapes to expand on the details and pseudoscience behind the main plot, right? However, the tapes don't really follow through in that regard either. A majority of the cassette tapes in this game range to 1-3 to three minutes of content, and they don't really expand on any political or scientific aspects of the game. They just explain what something is and why they operate. Half the tapes in this game don't even do that. Some of them just repeat word for word what Miller and Ocelot deliberate on in a cutscene and effectively add nothing to the game. This is pathetic compared to the tapes of Ground Zeroes, which properly replace cutscenes while filling downtime, but it's also a crime compared to the codex of previous games. I remember being heavily invested in Metal Gear Solid 3 as characters discussed the growing tensions between the GRU and the KGB and how this affected politics with America. I enjoyed hearing Snake and Raiden in Metal Gear Solid 2 wax on about how technology and simulations pale in comparison to real-world combat experience. I even loved hearing Chico talk about old folk tales of monsters and hearing Boss's almost childish reactions to them in Peace Walker. The tapes in Metal Gear Solid 5 do nothing of the like, they merely act as briefing files for content already spoken to us most of the time. The biggest crime is that Metal Gear Solid 5 actually has a codex system, but it's nowhere near as involved as Metal Gear Solid 1's, let alone the rest of the series. In Metal Gear Solid 5, you get no broadband radio to get trivia about the game, you just get a button that reminds you what your mission objective is. This harkens back to my gripe with the use of the Peace Walker game model. This form of codec is obviously meant to cater to people that play in less than hour long chunks, yet Metal Gear Solid 5 is a game that is designed to be played at hours at a time, so why can't we merge the codec and the tapes into one system? This design of an open world stealth game where you have long stints of time used to prepare and plan your actions gives a great opportunity to passively expand on the game's story, but sadly we never see this. Another strange issue with the narrative structure of this game is the lack of sustained focus on anything important. 
Metal Gear Solid 5 was touted as Big Boss's quest for revenge against Cypher and Skullface. However, once you get past the introduction segments, the game quickly becomes more like Miller's descent into insanity trying to hunt down Cypher. For how heavy-handed the Moby Dick references are in this game, it really feels like Miller should have been Ahab and Venom Snake should have been Ishmael to begin with. Coincidentally, with how this is supposed to be the definitive Big Boss game, he almost feels like background fluff with how often Miller and Ocelot get FaceTime and react to the events at hand. I mean, I know Kiefer Sutherland is an expensive guy to hire, but at least have the man react to something like the Man on Fire or Wormhole Guns. Along with the lack of a protagonist focus, we don't even see the antagonists of the game half the time. The game touts Skullface, Man on Fire, The Skulls, and Cypher as the antagonists, but for how much time you sink into the game you see a wickedly disproportionate amount of time for them. Going off the top of my head across 40 unique missions, Skullface has about 6 small cutscenes, The Man on Fire has the entire introduction sequence and one boss fight alongside a concluding side op, The Skulls unit themselves only get 4 fights barring the introduction escape, and you almost never hear about Cypher outside of Miller's insane ravings. For a good 90% of the game you will be fighting either African or Russian soldiers with varying amounts of equipment to the point where you will have a cursory knowledge of the languages just from hearing their banter so often. You don't even know why exactly you're fighting these Russian soldiers or African PMCs either outside of Cypher using them as a puppet for puppet corporations or something really dumb. This further dilutes any impact the story would have had because we spend so much time not seeing the true antagonists that we often forget that they were even there. Remember how often in Metal Gear Solid 1 you would see Liquid Snake and Vulcan Raven just go on about their motives and shit? How about in Metal Gear Solid 3 with how much airtime the boss gets, or how hilariously evil Vulcan was whenever he had screen time? Even Peace Walker kept Coldman and Zadornov as the focal antagonists when necessary. We have a fond memory of Metal Gear Plus because we were constantly aware of who our enemy was. We knew how sinister Solidus was on the big shell, and we knew Ocelot was bonkers in Guns of the Patriots because it was constantly exposed to us as we progressed the game. With how little we see Skullface or even the Man on Fire, there's no impact to their appearance because there's no build-up to how sinister they are. Had we seen a direct response from any of the antagonists in regards to our main op actions, it wouldn't feel so empty. But by not seeing the villains for as long as we play the game, it really makes one lose sight of the grand scheme of things. On a more specific note, characterization is a mess in this game, and not in terms of why isn't this guy not the stereotype that we know. Metal Gear Solid 5 has a lot of characters get introduced into the story, but have no real reason for being there. As mentioned before, this game was supposed to be Big Boss and the Diamond Dogs vs. Skullface and Cypher, but really it winds up being Miller stocks Skullface around like a creepazoid. Everyone else that exists in this game only does so for gameplay reasons and doesn't contribute much to the overall story. Sure, Revolver Ocelot's here, but he exists to be the voice of reason while Miller goes on and on with his revenge boner. Huey makes his great return as the forlorn scientist, but then quickly gets shoved into a locker making D-Walker until like the last parts of the game. We get Quiet as a new character, who has little to any plot bearing whatsoever but mainly acts as a sort of easy mode button for players. Even the big boss man himself has no relevance in his own damn story up until the end of everything. It really feels like characters aren't there to convey a story, but rather to justify a game mechanic more than anything. If this game didn't even have Big Boss or Master Miller, you could get away with packaging this game as something other than a Metal Gear game. It really breaks the basic tenets of storytelling when you can barely explain why someone's here when discussing a story. And this really shoots the image of Metal Gear Solid 5 in the foot for me. To wind things down a bit, there are also some small things that bug me about the writing in general that no one seems to bring up. One hilarious thing is how often the words Phantom and Pain are dropped across the writing, like someone really wanted to do a title drop but kept getting caught in editing. It happens so often that you would think Konami didn't have a single thesaurus lying around or something. Another strange thing is how heavy-handed some of the allegories in this game are. The main characters are so heavily typecasted as the Moby Dick cast, right down to your extraction helicopter being the fucking boat from the book. The subplot with Eli is so obviously a Lord of the Flies ripoff that they even have the gall to put the shell in a dead pig head just out in the open. Hell, even the intro song The Man Who Sold the World spoils a big facet of the plot if someone was keen enough to read the lyrics beforehand. The lack of subtlety in these things really feels tasteless in some ways. There's also a slight issue I have with time mismanagement in this game. I mentioned before that there's a lot of downtime in between chopper travel and stealthing around through areas that could be filled by the cassette tapes. However, most instances of chopper travel are accompanied by Miller's briefings, which override any tape audio you have playing. Conversely, playing any tape audio in the middle of a mission mutes outside sounds, so it's a bit of a hazard to listen to audio while stealthing around and getting exposed from missing an audio cue. 
These little problems aren't much on their own, but they accent the underlying issues I've been discussing for a good while now. I'd like to end this video with a quote from Hermann Göring. We'll go down in history either as the world's greatest statesmen or its worst villains, which reflects the theme that Metal Gear Solid V should have expanded upon with Big Boss. But it didn't. Instead, this quote describes what the Metal Gear Solid series is slowly becoming. We had a great trilogy of games from the early 2000s slowly have content added on and compounded upon itself to the point where it's become a beast we don't recognize anymore. It's a shame, really, because I actually like the gameplay of Metal Gear Solid V so much, but I found the story to be almost offensively intrusive at times. I've always felt that great things come in threes, and funnily enough, that's when the Metal Gear Solid series peaked and also began to spiral into problems. It's hard to say whether this is due to Kojima becoming creatively bankrupt with the Metal Gear series, interference from Konami due to their changing philosophies on business, or just conflicting game designs in general, but it's plain to see that Metal Gear Solid V is more of a mess than usual with its story. It's sad to see that Peace Walker, a spin-off game on the PSP, was a more elegant and concise way to close off the Metal Gear Solid series than the Phantom Pain, which has left a haunting realization of what the series may soon become. Oddly enough, I kind of want to read Moby Dick now.